Welcome back you guys. Today I wanted to show you how to get a perfect three-way corner. This is something a lot of people struggle with but it's actually really simple if you just follow this two-step process. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to coat one side of each of these corners and the way I like to think of it is I like to picture each one of these going into this it's called a three-way corner so each one of these is like a road and it has two sides so I'm gonna get the mud on one side of my knife here and for this first coat we're gonna be doing it on that same side every time and I am coating the right hand side of what would be that road and I may as well take it right down to here because that's how far this thing needs to be coated And then again, same side of the blade. This is again, the right hand side of that road going into that three way there. And again, the right hand side. All right, it's a bit tricky to try and keep my head out of the way. Um, so anyways, normally if you're coating all these corners, you know, you'd go all the way back eventually, but uh, that doesn't really matter. So now that we've got this big mess in this corner here, what we're going to do is start cleaning it out. So first you start by feathering your edge. And then I get in here again, get my corner right in there. And I kind of then place this one in there like that. Wipe it out like that. Now I'm going to go down to this next one. Keeping your knife clean helps. So feather that edge again and then I'm going to carefully do that inside corner. We got a bit of mess down here. We should keep that tidy. So there's less to scrape out later. Okay, this final one now. Feather the edge, get right into that corner. I'm kind of placing it in there gently and then do that. And this could use a bit more feathering right there. So we've done one side of each of these and now I wanna show you guys up close what it looks like. Okay, looking right up close, we can see there's a groove there that needs to be filled. There's a groove there that needs to be filled and there should be one on one of those ones. So we're not gonna worry about any of these grooves and we're gonna wait for it to fully dry before doing the next step. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry over the weekend. I gave it a lot of time. This job was cold. But all I've done so far is I've taken this sander and run this through here. Um, this was just something that needed to be fixed, so that's not part of this video. But yeah, really quickly, I ran this sander through. You can use a regular sponge, but this thing's awesome. And the next thing is it'll never get right in the corners, so you kind of got to pick them out just a little bit. If you got any crunchies or niblets, you want it pretty flat, but you also don't want to wreck it. So you shouldn't have to do too much. And now we get back to, again, treating this like an intersection, going European style this time, left side of the road. So, which, all right, I got to put it on, yep, that side of my knife. So the other side of your knife this time, and we're going to go again, that left-hand side. So this, and it doesn't have to be too thick. Ooh, a little more on there. I'm kind of skimming at this point because I've already got my first coat on. So this can be a little bit tighter than the last one. And I always like to get all of them on first, like all three sides. Just makes it a bit easier to work with. Okay, so now we're gonna start cleaning that out. Feather your edge. Try and carefully get right into the corner. There's one. Again, feather that edge. Try and get right into the corner. So we're getting pretty close here. Oh. 
But the general idea to fill in those gouges is just doing the opposite side when dry. It's a very simple concept. Works wonders. And I just want one more right there. Another thing to keep in mind is you can always, like, you'll get it really close. You can sand it out and you can touch it up after if there is anything, like after priming. But let's, I'm gonna get you guys up close and you can see how good this looks at this stage before I've even sanded it. Let's get right up close. So as you can see, if you get like insanely close, it's not a million percent perfect. But a lot of that will sand out and it'll also fill in with paint. So you're really not gonna see that stuff. And again, if there is any imperfections, you can always fix them after primer, but that's what it looks like. Okay, we are at the final stage here. So the first thing I've done is I've run through the job with this guy to get everything nicely sanded. And then I went through the whole place with my vacuum sander to get rid of the little line that it leaves right there and just to sand the whole walls in general. And I've left this last six inches to show you guys how to sand this part out because that's really all you need to know is how to get into this last six inches for that three-way corner. So I've got an angled sanding sponge. These are the best. I'll link anything in the description that I think will be helpful. I often tear off. So right there you can see I've torn off the edge so that when I'm sanding right in the corner like that, this part doesn't leave a sharp line. However, I almost never sand like that. So what I actually do is I almost always, like I'll get this corner right in here and I'll just kind of sand like this. And often like this, I kind of like put pressure on this edge of the sponge. And so that way I'm sanding out the corner. I'm not leaving a sharp line right here as I sand because that often happens. You'll have like a totally sharp line right there. So it's this kind of bending that I do that helps me get right into the corner without actually leaving lines anywhere else. So that's the general idea. I think I'll get a little closer up for you guys. Okay, so like I said, I'm getting right up into the corner. I'm pushing like this. And I'm sanding that out. I'm doing the same thing right here. You can also push into it. I'm just going like this. This one needs a bit more work, I can see. I also have a bright light shining down the wall so I can see everything I have to sand. So if you've noticed, I'm doing every single side. This one has a little bit of mud built up right here. If it's not too much, you can take your knife and kind of shave it down. I like these angled three inch ones. So it's not perfect yet. Now I can fine tune it better. I think I'll get down here one more time, up here. I often kind of do everything a couple times just to make sure. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And that very last little bit that you can't actually get into, you just scrape out with a knife. It might take a few different angles to get it just right, but that's it. Let's take a close look. Okay, as we can see running into the corner, I mean, yeah, it's pretty perfect. Get up a little closer. There's nothing to see here. That corner looks good. And that corner looks good. So that's it. That's how you get a perfect three-way corner. So again, I'll link all this stuff in the description. This is not necessarily for three-way corners, but it's gonna help you with your corners in general the angled sanding sponges. This is the only type I've used. I've been using this exact type of sponge for about 10 years now. I have zero reason to change. And I think I've been using this same three inch angled knife for about 10 years. If you look really close, those corners are getting pretty round. 
it doesn't actually get used for like taping much. I pretty much only use it for scraping out those corners and occasionally scraping blobs off the floor. Anyways, that's it. I hope this video helps clarify and demystify getting a perfect three-way corner. I want to say thanks for watching. As always, you guys, I hope your projects are going really well, but I hope you are even better. So thanks for watching. Till the next one.